We have Nolan from Siemens Canada here and Mr. Inspecto from Siemens and that's a demo we have at ATF in Edmonton 2025. So Nolan, if you don't mind, just quickly walk us through. What is Inspecto, what does it do and so on? So Inspecto is AI-enabled machine vision inspection system. The big selling point for us is basically allowing customers, no matter how small or large, to forego the need for domain knowledge within machine vision, lighting expertise, as well as AI. What we essentially have is a system that's a six step uh, solution that allows you to easily set up the system within 40 minutes and begin inspecting, carrying out quality assurance and quality control uh, solutions right on the shop floor. So I know you have an industrial PC and you have a camera over there. If you could explain what each part does and overall walk us through, through the technical aspect as well. Of course, so the IPC is running the, the software itself. So the solution is completely air gapped. There's no requirement to connect it to IT and no pushing of these, this, these samples, these images, to the cloud. Also, we have the camera and the smart light. The camera itself comes with the system, and what's really cool is the smart light. The smart light has four quadrants. Each of them, when we basically set up the profile, we change the settings with the smart light. The brightness, as well as each individual quadrant turns on and off. We collect the, the individual samples in very quick succession so that we can optimize the settings and parameters of the camera as well as the smart light so that customers, again, don't need to have the background, the domain knowledge, both in lighting and machine vision when setting up the system. It makes the process so expedient. Again, 40 minutes, 20 OK samples, and you're ready to begin inspecting. So from what I understand, as you mentioned, the, the main beauty or advantage of Inspecto is it's very simple to use. You don't need to have any knowledge in artificial intelligence and vision system. So all you need to do, you just go to the software and then into the training section, you just show the system how a healthy or you know working component or part looks like and then the software detects the failed one. So if you could just quickly show us how the process is. Yeah, so of course. So we have basically some profiles that I've set up here before. And you'll notice that these aren't really too much related. We have a terminal strip, an adapter board, and even automotive gasket. One made out of hard plastics, one of a little bit of metal as well as plastic, as well as neoprene in this. So I can easily click these and click uh, the load profile and move to another actual um, component, completely different from one uh, uh, from one another. So I can come in here, put this in here, take one out of the baggie and begin inspecting. So you'll see here that I have basically the manual uh, set up so I can basically come here and click inspect and I can see and notice that there's a defect, there's a compression of the gasket and when two surfaces are, are basically fastened together there might be some form of leakage and deformity or uh, contamination of these two, uh, these two surfaces fastened together with one another. So I can then come back out here and I say maybe I have a completely other component that I want to, um, to work with but one thing I'd like to actually show off before I forget is maybe someone doesn't really understand why it said that there is an anomaly. So we can come here and actually compare from what the good sample looks like and what the bad sample looks like. Then if we come back, we can easily then decide to make a new profile. So if I come here and click a new profile, I can click new profile, and you notice here, it's a completely guided solution. It's a completely guided graphical solution. And in the later steps, we even show uh, animations as well on how to actually set up properly. So the first step is, is deciding basically some details. So here I'll just be quite uh, prototypical and just use test and everything. So we do the test here, and then of course you can set up the production line, location, and description. And then I can do stationary. Perhaps it's something that um, we push into the field of view, or we can even do a moving conveyor. So we can move uh, components moving on a conveyor. That can be middle of line, even end of line. And then the tutorial animations, which are just really nice to have. So step two, nice and easy. I want to position basically the sample that I'm going to be, I'm going to first work with, the first OK sample. And then of course this is also giving you a live feed of the camera. So of course I've already set up my camera, but if you notice at the top, there's actually an animation showing you what you're supposed to do in the step. So we're basically uh, orientating the camera. This feels pretty good and uh, I know what my, my thing is, so I'll actually also, just to get the best settings, I can do a click and drag here and then get the camera to autofocus on the center. So this will take a few seconds, and once it's ready to go, I can then easily come here and 
press next. So I get the green outline and then I'll go next for where the area is focusing. And then again, I have a nice animation telling me what I'm doing here. So this is zooming in. So I can import a markup, which I'll show you what later what that is. I can rotate the image based off of maybe somebody's pushing in. It's a little bit disorientating uh, from the field of use, considering that it's rotated by 180. And then here, a really easy way to just zoom in the camera. So you'll notice here that it gives me a zero to 100 gradient, but beneath, it gives me a distance. It's telling me how far the camera needs to be from the, the actual surface that it's inspecting, the component that it's inspecting. So the more I zoom in really, really far, the more it's telling me, oh, I need 180 um, centimeters of distance or greater to actually inspect such a small defect. So I'll come out here, maybe, you know, 52. Uh, I'll go 52, that seems pretty good. So I can go to 50, and then I can come here, and then click next. And then the next thing is marking up the component. So I can easily come here, and I can either outline the surface that I want to inspect, or I can click this simple button, click here, and then it'll basically automatically outline the component. But I'll also notice here, ah, maybe I want to click one more time because it still has this portion, the actual background. So what I can do here is come here and click done, and then I can add another exclude. So I can click exclude, I can come here and click a shape, drag it here, and then what I can do here is scale, and then I can basically just drag it to be bigger, approximately the size of this, and then I can just click move, and then center it. Why we're doing this is basically so the AI system can actually uh, notice the component when it enters the field of view, especially if you're using automatic trigger. Then we have the uh, region of interest. So I have the first one. I have inspection, but then I also have something called uh, presence. Think of presence if you want to notice if there's an IC component on a very complex um, circuit board. Or inspection is maybe you, you want this type of neoprene surface, or maybe you even want something like a metal casting where there's excess metal uh, from the from the casting process that uh, that might be def of deformity. So I can do that, and I can easily say maybe I want to inspect the whole surface. So I can do inspect the entire surface as a region of interest and click next. And the final thing is, is the other AI portion that I spoke about earlier is the image optimization where we use AI to take a bunch of samples, changing a bunch of parameters with the smart light in the camera, and then basically allow the AI to recommend us the settings of the, the solution. Once this is done, all that's left is provide the 20 samples and you're done. So I'll wait until this is done, this takes a minute or two, okay. and then we're ready to go. The image optimization is completed, I can see what the recommended settings or image modes based off of the uh, AI, what the AI is recommended. So it's telling me that anti-reflection with one, uh, one plus one, so two quadrants opposing from one another on the smart light um, are, are being in use. So I can actually come here and uh, test the full view and see what the different samples look like with the anti-reflection one plus one, two plus two, the fast image with no, uh, basically no settings changed, and then HDR, and then I can even change to ch for HDR off. What I can even do then is actually, if I wanted to, I can actually go back to the grid view and decide to do a manual mode. So you can build off the recommended, uh, the, the imaging modes that we sh I just showed off, and then use them on top of that, and name basically the setup. So if you do have machine vision and lighting expertise, this isn't a pure black box that locks you out of it. You can change the lighting and machine vision uh, settings. And then if you're an AI expert, you can even change the threshold settings to be more scrupulous or less scrupulous. So all that's really left is to say, I'm happy with my settings, click next. And then we begin providing 20 OK samples to the, the model and you're ready to go. A very simple, expedient process. I don't even think this took us the typical 40 minutes. So no. I think a large amount of customers are going to find a great amount of use and ease to be able to implement machine vision in their day-to-day -day use cases. That's awesome. So at this point, all we need to do, as you mentioned, we just provide 20 OK or healthy sample. Yep. And it captures all those 20 sample photo 
And based on those, the machine learning algorithm basically identified the faulty um, device or element, we can call it. Yeah. And I think we should add this as well, that one of the beauty of this configuration is you can access the information in real time to your PLC, is that correct? Yes, you're correct. And we're not, and we're not just limiting customers to Siemens PLCs over Profinet, there's Ethernet IP as well. But you might also say, where do the images go to that I've collected, the samples, the tracks? You can easily use secure file transfer protocol and put them to a central location to maximize the storage for over years, if not decades. So we, all of what the data that we're collecting here is easily able to be shared to your PLC. You can do KPIs and calculations on your PLC. And again, Profinet, Ethernet, or move the, the images over a secure file transfer protocol. I would also conclude you can manually trigger like I have here through a mouse and keyboard. You can, auto, you can do automatic triggering on a conveyor. Or even cooler, you can use a PLC to tr trigger the samples. You might have a two minute uh, assembly process so you can trigger from the PLC. Very simple, very easy setup. And if you go to our CIOS, our Siemens Industrial Online Support uh, website, there's actually a easy to use application example to con connect with our 1200 PLC and the Inspecto uh, Vision Inspected System. So again, lost thing. Thank you for your time, and I hope to uh, speak to you guys further about Specto. For sure, yeah. Thank you very much, Nolan. Thank you.